And thank you for tuning in to the Under Construction Podcast with Martin Williams. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. You can do so on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and SoundCloud. All the links to the podcast can be found at guidedexpressions.com forward slash podcast or in the YouTube description box. Either one will get you there. So today what I wanted to talk to you about is self-doubt and how self-doubt is a disease. I am someone who has suffered from doubting himself for a number of years. And uh, looking back over it, I've wasted a lot of time uh, struggling with doubt, not really knowing what to do or knowing the <clears throat> excuse me, the direction that I should go in. And a lot of times what I ended up doing, I ended up either not doing anything or choosing the wrong path by default, but not really being confident in the path that I chose. And I wonder if anyone else is like that. I wonder if you're like that. You know, you're faced with different choices, you're faced with a conundrum, and you don't really know what to do, so you basically either don't choose anything or you choose the worst path by default. Self-doubt is, in my opinion, a disease. It's something that plagues millions, if not billions of people around the planet. And self-doubt is something that's not going to really get you give you the life that you want, the life that you truly desire, you're not going to get it from doubt. You're just not. Um, it's one of those things where no matter what you really want to produce in life, self-doubt will not allow you to have that thing that you truly, truly want. So what do you do about that? What do you do about doubt? First of all, you have to know what doubt is. Doubt basically means double or two minds or two paths, right? The same root word where we get double is a root word in doubt, right? Anytime you have doubt, it means that you're presented with at least two paths and Either path seems like it might work or it seems like it might not work. And if you don't know how to deal with doubt, then it's very easy to make the wrong decision. But you also have to understand where doubt comes from. Doubt comes from us. Okay? It comes from us. We create doubt in our own mind. And when you understand that doubt is your creation, when you understand that you create, if, if, you're, if you have a significant doubt in your life, <clears throat> excuse me, you created that doubt. And, and the reason that you created that doubt is you're unsure of yourself. You don't have the confidence in yourself to make the right decision. Some decisions are as clear as day, Right. Um, let's say, for instance, there's a decision of jumping off a building <laughs> or not jumping off a building. For most people, the decision's easy. Not going to jump off the building because the consequences are clear, right? Now, let's say you're at work and you have a decision to make of whether to do something uh, in one direction or do something in another direction. Now, all of a sudden, the choice isn't as clear. But is it as unclear as we make it out to be? And the answer is probably not, because most jobs have these things called SOPs, right? They have these uh, work instructions, SOPs, uh, company manuals, right? And 
All of these things are there to help you make better decisions. If it's not in the SOP, then it's probably not something that you want to do unless given a direction to do that, right? So, you know, if you're unsure, the best thing probably is just to ask a manager if this is the thing that you should be doing. And if you don't, then you're more or less guessing. And a lot of people, they live in a guess work type of system of living and they're guessing all the time and i would just say you're better off making a decision based on some hard knowledge and that hard knowledge doesn't have to come from a book or a system or anything else it can come from you uh, it's really <clears throat> excuse me it's really just making a decision that okay this is the path that i'm going to to go down and if it doesn't work then I'm not I'm not even going to think about it not working okay because when you have doubt what you're basically putting out into the universe is it might work might not work might work might not work might not work work might work might not work right so you're putting that out there okay and if we believe what Napoleon Hill said, that our minds are a broadcasting system, right? Our minds are a broadcasting station, meaning that we're broadcasting our thoughts out into the world, okay? If we truly believe that that's true, then we're putting out doubt into the universe. So anyone that interacts with us, they're getting these mixed messages, right? They're getting messages that it might work, might not work might work, might not work, right? So that those mixed messages are going to confuse people, right? If you're dealing with people, and we all do on some capacity, we're confusing them because of our doubt, something that we created. And when you confuse people, it can make it very difficult to interact with them. It can be make it very difficult to either enter into a relationship with them or remain in a relationship with them. Let's say you're a business owner and you're trying to sell to people, right? If you're giving them all kinds of mixed messages, okay, you're confusing uh, a person that wants to spend money with you, that wants to buy your product. And if you don't give them a clear, consistent message, they're probably not going to buy anything, right? If you're trying to enter into a relationship with someone, let's say you want to date or be friends with, right? That confusing messaging can make it very difficult for that person to agree to a relationship with you, if that makes sense, right? Um, if you're in a marriage relationship, okay, and you're not giving clear, concise, consistent messaging to your partner or your spouse, it can make it very difficult for the two of you to grow as a couple because of that, those mixed messages. So I can't stress enough how important it is that we deal with doubt and we deal with it at the root level. So how do you deal with doubt? Well, I kind of alluded to it a little earlier but doubt is basically a creation of our own minds, okay? It's basically our mind trying to decide which path to go on and lingering in that decision so much that either you don't do anything or you pick the, the worst choice of the two. The way you get rid of doubt is you pick a path right? Using the information that you have, using your instincts, right? Trusting your instincts, trusting your heart, trusting spiritual insight, right? Combining all those things and making a concerted decision. When you combine spiritual 
insight with practical know-how, usually um, you're going to arrive at the right decision. If the two conflict, right? If your spiritual insight conflicts with your practical, mental, um, scientific reasoning, for lack of a better word, right? If those two things conflict, always go with the spirit, okay? Because God sees things that you don't see, and he knows things that you don't know. So you may have calculated a path that makes sense, but God sees something bigger and sees something more and he sees deeper. So if the two conflict, always go with the spirit. Always go with the spiritual um, solution, right? Uh, I'll give you a practical example. Um, When we decided to move to Florida, we... Um, you know, we, we moved because we were tired of the winters up north. Um, we wanted a change of scenery. We wanted all these different things. And so leading up to the move, certain things weren't going as planned. Um, for instance, we were, um, we were scheduled to get a rather large uh, tax refund and it had been delayed a long time, right? And we were supposed to get it, I think, in April. And we, we had entered into June, and we still didn't have it. And this was, um, this was money that we would need to make that move. So, I, you know, I began, to, I began to doubt a little bit whether I was making the right decision or not to move. Even though it was something that I prayed about, it was something that I was um, fairly confident spiritually that that it was the right decision. Things weren't lying, lining up the way that I had planned them to. Okay, so you had that. You had uh, some other things that were happening that I won't get into right now, but. Um, it was looking like maybe we should stay in Pennsylvania. That's where we came from. So I prayed again. And uh, within a few days, the refund showed up uh, kind of unexpectedly. And then, uh, you know, things were starting to line up the way that I had planned them to. The move was still very difficult because we had been in the house for a number of years. And, you know, any any time you stay somewhere for a number of years, you, you just accumulate stuff, most of which you don't use on a daily basis. And, um, you know, you got to, like, you got to get all the stuff out. And, you know, it's just, uh, we, had, we had issues with, with movers. The movers that I initially hired, they didn't show up. So we basically had to find someone off of Craigslist and basically do the bulk of the move between us and, and two random strangers off of Craigslist. <laughs> um, you know, and God bless them because they definitely uh, helped us out a great deal. But my point in all this is even when it looked like it wasn't going to work, it ended up working. And even though the, the trip itself was you know, still difficult because we had to drive a U-Haul all the way down to Florida. And, um, you know, my daughter who was eight, year, eight years old at the time. She had never been in a car that long. And so that was um, a challenge, to say the least. <laughs> but she was a trooper, and she made it. Um, but long story short, we made the right decision. And the right decision was revealed all along through the spirit, right? And so, you know, when you pray, always pray that God reveals the right direction. And understand that when the right direction is revealed at the time, it may not look like it's going to work. It may not look like it's the right decision. It may not look like 
Uh, it may not look practically the right decision, okay? But always lead with the spirit, okay? Because when you when you make a decision, whatever decision you make, when you make a decision, things begin to line up behind that decision, right? So when you decide, right, and, and the decision is based on whatever spiritual insight you get, right? When you decide something, line up behind that decision, things begin to start falling in place, okay? What we have to guard against is allowing our emotions to drive our decision-making, okay? So within the inner realm of our life, right, what the Bible calls the kingdom of God, okay, there is a spiritual component, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a spiritual component, there's an emotional component, and then there's a, a mental component, right? So our mental component is important because that's how we interact with the outside world, okay? Our emotional com component is important because that is our, uh, our power center, our emotions power our lives, right? And our emotions also attract our lives, okay? When you're sad, you, ex you attract more sadness. When you're happy, you attract more happiness, right? So that's why our emotions are very important. And then, of course, our spiritual component is how we connect with God. So if you're ever confused or ever trying to figure out... <laughs> What do I do? Like, you know, if you're stuck in doubt, okay? Doubt, again, is multiple paths, which all seem like they're the right way. You connect with your spiritual self, the spiritual part of you. And you can do this by getting quiet. You can do this by meditating. You can do this by prayer, right? You connect with the spiritual side of you. And you ask this spirit, this all-knowing spirit, what is the right direction for me? What is the right direction for my business? What is the right direction for my family? Okay? And it will be revealed to you. It is always revealed to you. Even if we don't necessarily want to hear it at the time. Okay? Our emotional center, we've got to, we have to regulate our emotions. You can't allow your emotions to be to run rampant, okay? Because if you are emotionally out of control, you begin to do things that are destructive to your life, destructive to your finances, destructive to your relationships, and so on and so forth. Because too many people live strictly from their emotional center instead of balancing it out with the other two components. Okay, and then your mental component is basically setting things in order, right? So once we decided to move to Florida, we had to plan things out. And again, at first, things weren't going according to plan. But if it wasn't for that plan, the trip wouldn't have been uh, an overall success, which it was. At the time... You know, things were looking a little shaky. Uh, but, you know, uh, an interesting part of that is, uh, and I, I forgot to mention it before, when we got the U-Haul, we were contacted by U-Haul to uh, carry a trailer um, down to Orlando. And so in doing so, we were able to take off I think it was almost $500 off the cost of the U-Haul because we were doing them a, fa a favor um, by by taking this trailer um, down to or Orlando which was on the way we basically like took the trailer we dropped off the trailer and then completed the trip to um, where we live now and so um, that we saved money, right? So that that's all about 
setting things in order, like we set things in order, we had a budget and everything else, and then you know here here's a happy surprise, like we get that that credit to save that money. Um, but that is, but when you're in harmony with your inner realm, like when your inner realm is working the way that it should you the direction is clear your decisions are correct and you experience success okay so i want to uh, i want to thank you for listening i'm going to really start talking more and more about this part of my coaching um the inner realm coaching because i think that uh, a lot of people are chasing, it's like we're chasing things, we're chasing money, we're chasing success, we're chasing status, but we're not uh, ordering our lives the way that we need to, okay? Um, we have these three components that if we get these three components in harmony, everything else works in our lives, everything, and you start experiencing less doubt less fear, less um, hesitancy, less procrastination, because um, everyone, everything is working together. All, all your components are working together as they should. And so I'm excited to share more about this coaching with you. And uh, I'm going to shut it down for now. And hopefully you will uh, subscribe to the podcast. Uh, interact with me on Facebook. Uh, look from look from my page, Martin Williams. Uh, interact with me on Twitter um, at Martin Rote W R O T E, uh, and also on Instagram at M J Williams nine five. And so I want to thank you for tuning in. I hope you have a great great day, and I will talk to you soon.